Hey Jeepers, on episode 216 of the Jeep Talk Show, we'll hear about FCA having 70 straight months of sales increases and how confusing electronic shifters have led to crashes and an investigation by the NHTSA. You know, we've got some Nikki G for you. We'll play your voicemails and even share a couple of our latest reviews. We'll also start a new segment with build advice for our Cherokee owners. In Wrangler Talk Time, we'll cover her experience with cold Wrangler windows. I'll talk about power window lockout switches, and Tony talks about faulty crank position sensors. All that and more on some Amazon You Buy What on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. First week in Jeep. Well, apparently Jeep sells when others just don't. Despite virtually every other car maker blaming their lack of sales due to the most recent snowpocalypse, FCA breaks records and takes names. Sales rose a whopping 6.9% for the car maker in January as big increases by Jeep and Dodge offset the trend of a very sharp drop in sales for the Chrysler and Fiat brands. FCA U.S. reported sales of 150,037, its best January total in nine years. And check this out. It's 70th consecutive month of year-over-year gains. That's impressive. Wow. The company's sales were largely unaffected by the monster storm that dumped over a foot of snow across the Northeast last month, temporarily shutting down literally hundreds of dealerships. I bet when that snow melted, there was a lot of would-be Jeep owners making their way to the dealerships the moment the roads were cleared. Jeep, Dodge, and Ram each had three vehicles that turned in record sales for January. The Jeep brand also set a new January record for unit sales alone. Dodge sales all over, uh, overall climbed 19% despite a 42% decline for the Dart. Apparently, people don't like that thing. Either that or it's not worth the money, which is too bad because I kind of like the SRT version of it. On the other end of the spectrum is the Challenger, Charger, and oddly enough, the Dodge Journey, which all set records for January as well. What's more interesting is the apparent growth in families here in the U.S., or So I'm guessing as the third row seating vehicles had a massive jump in the first month of 2016. The Grand Caravan soared 83% and the Dodge Durango was up 70%. Impressive gains for the Mommy Missiles. Jeep was up 15% overall as the Cherokee Compass and Patriot also broke sales records for January. And now we can't leave out the trucks for all of this. Ram sales rose 5.2% last month. Not bad, modest gain compared to the rest of the FCA lineup. In comparison though, Ram pickup... ProMaster and ProMaster City commercial vans all received January records from years prior. Now for the other foot to drop. Fiat sales declined by a whopping 20% as sales of the new 500X crossover failed to offset steep declines for both the 500 mini car and the 500L hatchback. Chrysler sales were no better off, really, in fact, worse, if anything, falling 22% in January as the Chrysler 200 series, um, 200 mini uh, midsize sedan, sorry, plunged a devastating 63%. The question, of course, arises, will they revamp their designs or drop the line altogether? The only saving grace for Chrysler was the brand's full-size 300 sedan and its outgoing town and country minivan, which managed sharp sales increases. FCA US said it ended the month with 66,652 unsold vehicles, or what would calculate out to about a 103-day supply. So what does all that mean? That means we're likely going to see some big sales incentives Coming up at the dealerships as we roll into spring. Now, Speaking of why some things may not be selling, bad news for FCA and good news for me. U.S. auto safety investigators have determined that electronic gear shifters in some of the newer Fiat Chrysler SUVs and cars are so confusing that drivers have exited the vehicles while they are in gear, (laughs) causing to date at least 121 crashes and 30 injuries. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has doubled the number of vehicles in the investigation to more than 856,000, but it stopped short of calling for an actual recall. The probe now covers 2014 and 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokees and 2012 through 2014 Dodge Charger and Chrysler 300 sedans with the 3.6 liter V6 engines. uh, Fiat Chrysler says it's cooperating with the probe. So why is it good news for me, you might ask? Well, the safety agency says in documents posted Monday that it's upgrading the investigation to an engineering analysis, which is a step closer to a recall 
and further solidifies the point that I've been making for over two years now that the retards in the design and engineering department at FCA have their heads shoved so incredibly far up their proverbial butts that they all deserve to be fired for the round after round of recalls, mistakes, delays, bugs, foobars, and don't get me started on the name badge thing again because even though I know the engineers that likely have nothing to do with that, they're getting blamed for this nonetheless. I never said it was their fault. I'm just blaming them. Hey, big thanks to all you guys out there who help us out each and every week by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. You guys have a story you think we should be reporting on or you got something you uh, want to say or think uh, we should be saying about it or you got something to say about any one of our stories. Well, drop us a line, would you? Send an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. So I don't have this in front of me, written in front of me, but it uh, seems to me that I recall hearing that there are a few lines that are being dropped. Uh, and uh, not necessarily with FCA, but uh, the, uh, the uh, I guess, pretty popular Scions uh, are being dropped. Oh, interesting. And um, there's, uh, I, actually, there was uh, the thing that I read or heard, there was like several really small cars that were that were uh, being dropped because uh, oil prices are so low and yeah. people are more interested in buying the the big behemoths again and uh, the car companies are kind of like hey it's okay with us because we make a lot more profit right on the big ones than the little ones so apparently it doesn't cost that much more to make the big one you know no, who, who knew really. it just uh, it didn't cost uh, it doesn't cost that much to add more air to the vehicle inside <laughs> just uh, but they uh, but because it's bigger apparently they can ask for more bucks because people think well it's bigger I got to pay more right well speaking of dropping lines I believe it is Patriot and Compass or maybe it's Liberty and Patriot that they that FCA is going to be dropping here in the next couple of years um, there are two of the Jeep lines that have been around for a little while yeah. that are going to be no more here coming up very soon well uh, that you know if you're a Patriot fan or a uh, <laughs> I want to say go Scion. Patriots yeah if you're a Patriot oh, wait, fan that's, <laughs> we're wrong that's kind yeah wrong <laughs> or a Compass NFL. fan I know it's that's bad news for you but uh, you know, here at the Jeep Talk Show, we really haven't considered those things real Jeeps anyway. Um, I, I guess it could be argued that the uh, uh, the the new Cherokee, especially the Trailhawk edition, uh, at least goes the extra uh, bit of attempt to get it to uh, an off road d- tennis shoe. I'm d- sorry, uh, vehicle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, Speaking of the design department. <laughs> Well, you know that's the, that's the other thing that bothers me about it. Jeep has always been a a trailblazer in design and and uh, form and function, and they didn't go that way with the the new Cherokee. They went they copied like everybody else. The only thing they they went off was like hidden uh, hidden headlights and then those angled uh, LEDs that everybody went. How could those be bright enough to light up the road? And of course they were all went. squinty. Yeah, all squinty. We won't we won't make any. Uh, uh, references to uh, uh, people of where they live in the in the world. Anyway, so uh, interesting news from uh, from Josh, and we appreciate that, Josh. Great, great information. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, the number one Jeep podcast at my mom's house. We welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. Dial 530-675-4102 and leave your message on our 24 by 7 voicemail. XJTalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off-road. And coming up on Wrangler Talk in just a little bit, my soft top window struggles and tips that could help you. Hey, I got to tell you about the 4x4 Radio Network. Uh, We've actually got a new member to the 4x4 Radio Network, Trailchasers.net podcast, although I think it just might be Trailchasers podcast. uh, He is, uh, Cody rather, is uh, working on some uh, episodes, putting several together before he does his initial release, but uh, he is going to be one of the uh, the first um, 4x4 Radio Network podcasts that uh, is uh, is in that... uh, you know, in that group from the very beginning. So we're very looking forward to uh, him uh, and his inaugural uh, podcast. Uh, but you can also listen to the 4x4 podcast, Center Steer, which is Land Rovers, Muddy Microphone, which is ATVs. Uh, and uh, all of us, including the uh, uh, Jeep Talk Show, have uh, joined forces and created a network. We'll be adding more shows to the lineup soon. You can visit 4x4radionetwork.com and listen to all these great podcasts simply by pressing the play button. There's no better place to get all your 4x4 information. That's 4x4 Radio Network, 
www.4x4radionetwork.com. So uh, Josh and I had talked about this even before Tammy had joined us about uh, doing a series of uh, segments. And, and I don't know, uh, Josh may, may actually jump in on this, uh, this series of segments as well. I, I know he's going to be commenting on this as, as, Tam, as well as Tammy will have uh, some questions on it, I'm sure. Uh, she won't be adding to it because she's never had a Cherokee, but uh, we always encourage Tammy uh, as a, a relative newbie to the, the jeeping uh, world to ask questions about things. Of course, it, we use that to our advantage at, on, at times, but <laughs> they're not knowing. But uh, and it's, it's all good fun, yeah. So this is going to be Jeep Cherokee from stock to wheeler. Uh, be a, seri- a series of uh, how do you take your stock Cherokee and turning it into a off-road machine. Uh, and uh, these may not be the way you did it. It may not be the way you think it should be done. And of course, we want to hear from you and hear what your ideas are. So this episode, we'll be discussing the 1997 to 2001 Jeep Cherokee, also known as the XJ. Now, this may apply to the 1984 to ni- uh, 1996 Jeep Cherokees as well. But as always, verify any information you received here before making any modifications to your Jeep. When modifying a Jeep Cherokee, most everyone goes for the money shot. Mod- modifications that have that wow factor. That is usually a lift and larger tires, often with new wheels. I'm here to tell you this isn't the proper first step. <laughs> it's, it is what I did, though. If you're going to take uh, your Jeep off-road, any off-road vehicle uh, will, can and will get stuck. The, the first thing you need to consider is how you're going to get unstuck. Makes complete sense, doesn't it? Throwing a toe strap around a, f- a front or rear axle is just begging for damage and perhaps even a trail repair before you can continue back home. The first thing you should do is install front and rear toe points. Factory toe hooks are often sought after on eBay and various Jeep forums. Don't skip on the quality of the bolts that are used to tie the toe hooks to the unibody. Rod off hand, I'd say grade 8 bolts, but do a little research and get the bolts used by the factory. Not necessarily the Chrysler boats, bolts, but the same grade and quality they used. If you have a tow package on your Jeep Cherokee, you may be able to get away with a 2-inch receiver D-ring that can just be installed when recovery is needed. Uh, that's what we actually did on my wife's 2003 TJ. Uh, the TJ is not planned on going off-road, but you never know whenever you might get... Uh, um, you know, stuck in a ditch or uh, this, you know, it's a Jeep. Sometimes you go places where normal people don't initially go. Now, uh, you may feel like you're going to get away without having to have tow points. And maybe you've actually gone wheeling and you haven't had to have any. But eventually, the braver you get, you're going to get stuck. And <laughs> I tell you what, whenever you start yanking on a, a leaf spring or yanking on one side or other of the Dana 30, um, it's just not going to be good depending on who's pulling you out and how fast, uh, how much time they're, they're taking doing it. So get the toe points that go to the unibody, which is kind of like the frame uh, for the Jeep. And that's the same places where the uh, front and rear bumper tie into. And you'll be a lot better off and you'll be a lot happier whenever you're getting unstuck and you don't have any damage to your precious Cherokee. Josh, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I've always been a fan of, uh, of recovery first as far as a, as a build goes. My first step, however, with any Jeep is going to be taking care of the mechanics first. I, I, would, I would say before even this sort of stuff uh, is to go through top and bottom to make sure that the kind of stuff that you are improving on the Jeep and, and the armor that you're adding and everything is still going to be able to get down the trail under its own power. Uh, it's one of the first things I did with my own Jeep, this last Cherokee that I got here is uh, I went through it soup to nuts, man. I mean, top to bottom, I went through every last little bit of fluid on it, checked everything uh, to make sure that there were no surprises because, uh, you know, assumptions, well, they can lead to disaster. So, um, but definitely, as, as Tony said, before you get into things like, you know, lift and traction devices and all that stuff, armor and recovery is key. Uh, armor can get you into places uh, that you probably shouldn't have gone, but uh, if you don't have the recovery points to get you out, well, then you are stuck beyond stuck. Yeah. And you know, that's funny because and I don't think it's just with the Cherokee. I think with the Wrangler too, it's the same thing. When I did my research on, wow, what am I going to do? There's just so much. And all the advice I got was recovery points. That should be your first thing. And then 
um, shoring it up, making it, you know, more armor. And so that's what I'm doing. Recovery points was my first. And now I'm, you know, putting skid plates underneath to protect it before my lift and my big tires. Well, you're a little fortunate with yours. Um, there, uh, I also wanted to mention that there are uh, other third party uh, tow point solutions out there. So, oh, yeah. you know, just visit your favorite Jeep Cherokee forum and ask uh, the, the members for their solutions, what they've done. Uh, and uh, of course, that includes xjtalkshow.com or, so, or sorry, xjtalk.com. Uh, on the next episode, we'll discuss our next step, which is Slip Yoke Eliminator or SYE. I have no idea what that is. I can't wait. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about it, Tammy. Well, I still on yours. like to learn. No, yeah. no. I mean, on, on your Jeep, I don't think you on have to Jeep. worry about it. To, it. I think it's a Cherokee thing. See, when I think of yoke eliminator, I'm thinking of some yak. Egg with, whites. With, <laughs> low, know, low calorie egg whites. yoke. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. You know what? We love hearing from all of you. So be sure and call our voicemail at 530-675-4102. Or, you know, you jump over to the website at jeeptalkshow.com and leave us a message. Just click on the send questions, comments button on the right-hand side of the screen. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do. So at the beep, leave your message. Hey, guys. This is Joe. I hope you're all doing fine. Hi, Joe. Um, hey, Joe. I'm just going to touch base. Um, I put a little thing on the XJ site. My daughter, you know, I was talking the last Ooh. time about her Overlander, you know, Grand Cherokee, and she had some friends with her, and they went to a quarry the other day, and uh, it was the freeze thaw, you know, and uh, the ground was a little muddy and soft, and she drove in, and she said that, uh, you know, I, I got a phone call, and she goes, uh, something's wrong with my Jeep, um, it's shaking really bad, so my wife, like, freaks out, and we take off down there, and when I get there, the reason it was shaking is uh, she had uh, red clay packed in in the wheels uh, <laughs> on the front. Yeah. And uh, so the story goes, she was driving it down a trail and it started sinking. So she stopped and didn't know what to do. And one of her friends, you know, uh, she had guys and girls in there, a whole pile of them, I'm guessing, and said, well, I'll just put it in reverse and see if you can back out. Yeah. So she did. And that was colorful at best. Um, because now it's got red clay packed top and bottom. I put a picture online just to give an idea of how bad that was. But um, other than that, things are going well, with the exception that my wife had an infected cut on antibiotics, then got a cold, then got pink eye. My daughter woke oh, up Lord. this morning with lice, um, uh. and my dishwasher broke. Uh, other than that, the Jeeps are doing great, though. So uh, you guys take care, and I'll touch base with you later. Um, I'm in the middle of a construction zone all of a sudden, too, and they've got a street sweeper in the road. What an interesting day I'm having. I'm not at work. Seriously. I called my boss. Uh, but, yeah, you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. See, this is what happens wow. when Josh complains <laughs> about his life on the show. <laughs> right. People, I know, right? People come out of the woodwork oh, trying yeah. to top him. <laughs> right. Oh, that, was talking about a one-upper. No, that, that was great. Uh, definitely <laughs> way worse than I've ever had it. Man, that's <laughs> Oh, Joe, man, hope things uh, turn around for you and your wife too. Good Lord, get well soon. Well, I think we uh, we all know that it's it's tough whenever you get sick, but it's worse whenever you have a loved one uh, that's ill and you can't do anything about it. Um, Especially your husband. Oh, I'm so sick. I'm so sick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, men don't get sick. I Tammy's holding her, holding her tongue. that statement. <laughs> I know. I'm like... <laughs> Because they're all holding your tongues. <laughs> well, you know, if you can, you do it. Hey, it's Joliet Johnny. It's Valentine's Day, roughly 7 in the morning Central Time. Got off work early. Figured I'd throw the XJ back together, take the wife out for a nice night. And, uh, yeah, it's leaking. So that ain't going to happen. Jeep. So it looks like I have to take the Renegade. And uh, it's supposed to snow. Wipes the freight of interstate driving, so... Should be interesting because I've only driven this Renegade twice. Uh, I already missed the XJ. All right, guys. <laughs> Hope yours is better than mine. Bye. Well, at least it's boxy and square like a Jeep's supposed to be. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I hope you had a good Valentine's Day anyway. Well, let's hear from Tim. Hey, Tony, Josh, and Tammy. It's Tim. 
And I'm just going to give you an update. Uh, I finally bought a uh, Wrangler. It's a TJ uh, 2002. Um, it's 180,000 miles, so it's a little used, but it's got that good um, uh, 4.0 in it, so I think it's going to last a good long time. It's yellow, so it's not really my first choice, but uh, now it's really it's grown on me, and I really love it. So I'm learning to work on it um, from all the... Uh, YouTube sites that I go to, and it, it's, there's quite a few of them. I really love it. And um, anywhere from Bleepin' Jeep to Paps Boys and Bullshit Corner and Chris Fix and Scotty Kilmer, and the list goes on and on. But thanks to them, I was able to, you know, do a lot of repairs. I, you know, changed the differential and the oil and the brakes, and I also did all the shocks all around. And next, I'm going to do the bushings and the Matter Baby. So uh -oh. that's my update. So keep uh -oh. up the good work and uh, talk <laughs> to you later. I'm not going to ask. Did you, did you get that one, Tammy? I'm not going to ask. You just say it in your head. What's the matter, baby? Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, uh, you guys are. I'm. I'm catching on here. Yep. Yep. That was nice. I almost know. said it too. I'm like, what's? Uh, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, there you go. Uh, See, it's Tony yeah. training. You're having proper yeah. Tony training. It's 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 kind of rough at first, but. Uh, yeah, well, you know, yellow, I like yellow. My wife doesn't really care for yellow. Uh, if if the, the Cherokee uh, had been yellow instead of red, other than her telling me no, I think we would have got it anyway. Because I like yellow. I think yellow is a, a nice bright color. And uh, uh, I like that. I like that in a vehicle. I like being able to see it. I like being able to find it in a parking lot uh, easily. Or in the uh, middle of a hurricane. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Snowstorm. You know. <laughs> so, congratulations on that uh, on that TJ. And if you if uh, you're not already a member, go over to WranglerTalk.com, sign up, and post us some pictures of your new yellow TJ 2002 TJ. I was waiting to hear if it was a standard or an automatic. Um, so he didn't mention that. I'd like to know that, Tim. Well, congratulations. I know you you're enjoying your uh, your new Wrangler. Uh, we have a 2003 uh, my, that my wife drives. And uh, she uh, she referred to it as her little Jeep uh, before I put the four inch lift and the thirty three inch tires. And she says, "What happened to my little Jeep? It's so big now. It just looks a lot bigger, uh, but the body didn't change at all. So it's uh, it's very interesting how the perception can change whenever you just it's do a, a few, mod few how modifications. They look. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, to, was that uh, was that Tim from Torrance? Because he sent us an email, a couple emails actually, with some pictures uh, of his Jeep, his uh, O2 Wrangler, at least a different Tim did, that just so happens to be yellow as well, well along with a little story of his recent wheeling trip in Jawbone Canyon. Well, you know, uh, I wasn't certain, but that's what crossed my mind whenever um, I heard him talking about his yellow uh, TJ, because there were several pictures that he had sent us, uh, three or four emails, I believe, at info at uh, jeeptalkshow.com which we really appreciate we don't really oh, yeah. talk about that we uh, we love seeing those pictures and uh well i hearing, like the, hearing the about story. your adventures yeah yeah and i like the story that came along with it uh, a little bit of uh, trail carnage and stuff as well kind of an adventure he had but that's what owning a jeep is all about is getting out there and get, having an adventure bitching and moaning about it too to anybody <laughs> that will listen <laughs> well it's it's gonna happen we listen <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. So uh, those are our voicemails for tonight. We really appreciate you guys calling in, and uh, we love hearing from you. So uh, if you haven't called in, call in. If you have called in, continue to call in. Uh, we uh, the, All the voicemails are great. We really, really appreciate them. Thanks for uh, playing. <laughs> Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Hey guys, we really want to hear from you. We want to know where you're listening to the Jeep Talk Show. Call into our voicemail, the 530-675-4102, or use our speak pipe, which is that little send questions comment, a little sideways slider there at jeeptalkshow.com. Let us know where you listen to the Jeep Talk Show. Uh, it can be irreverent. It can be funny. It can be factual. Don't care. We want to hear from you. Absolutely. We're going to have some fun with that here this year as well. We'll have a new uh, string of those 
put together hopefully by the end of the summer. Uh, show season's coming up. Can't wait to interact with some of you Jeepers out there and find out in person where you guys are listening to the Jeep Talk Show at. Hey, something uh, we want you guys to be doing often, early and often, of course, is heading over to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. There you guys can find a whole bunch of videos and, of course, a bunch of show archive stuff as well. If you guys would like to see us talk the show instead of just listening to us, well, you guys can always do that as well. We are broadcasting the show live. Uh, so if you guys want to get in on that action, make sure you guys subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get the reminders and you won't miss a single episode. Uh, of course, you guys can always check us out live as we broadcast the show right over at JeepTalkShow.com. But please head over to our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash JeepTalkShow. Get that subscription in. Hey, and be sure to tell a friend as well. Folks, now it's time something we've all been waiting for, look forward to each and every week, and that's hearing from the mind of Nikki G. Oh, and Nikki G's in the chat room tonight. I know. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. I got a kind of a serious question for Josh to answer this week. <laughs> all right. Uh, I got a friend of mine who drives a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe I'd hang around somebody that crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, one of his rear speakers quit working, and we were talking about how to diagnose it. And uh, we came up with the only way to, that we knew how to check to see if the speaker was good or not was with another speaker. But uh, I'm thinking that... It's connected with wires, so it has to be some type of electrical connection. Is there a way to test it with a voltmeter, test the wires to see if it's getting any power to the speaker? I don't know. My only experience with uh, electricity is not good. It's when uh, we were kids and my brother told me that the outlet on the kitchen counter was a butter knife cleaner. It doesn't clean butter knives. No. Not so well. All right, gentlemen uh, and girls, I will chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. Now, I know Nikki G was asking you, Josh, but I don't think you're going to mention this one. Let me let me ask you if this is true or not. I've never done yeah, it. Right. I, I think I Go remember hearing about it. Uh, now, he was talking about testing the wires to see if there was any voltage to, that are being uh, sent to the speaker. But you can actually test a speaker by using like a 9-volt battery, can't you? Yes. Um, to answer Nikki G's question, yeah, yes, you can use a, a voltmeter, a digital multimeter, uh, to test the resistance of the speaker. And, mm-hmm. and most automotive speakers uh, are around the 4-ohm range. If you're seeing a, um, a rating of 6.5 or 2, or, you know, something like that, well, obviously, you have open. one speaker, yeah, or a dead short even, or, or nothing at all, um, then you know that speaker is bad. If you're, if you're within 1 ohm of 4, uh, you know, plus or minus, you'll, you'll be just fine. And that speaker, that speaker should be good. Um, if you're seeing anything other than that, then you, you have some issues, either a bad speaker or uh, possibly a short. Now, to test whether or not that speaker actually has continuity, um, you, can, uh, you can use a little battery. I wouldn't use a 12-volt battery. That's going to move the cone way too much. You can use anything from a AA, although that might be a little quiet. Like Tony said, a 9-volt battery actually is perfect. One of those little square batteries. Go ahead and take that right out of your smoke detector in the hallway. Sure, nothing <laughs> bad will happen. Uh, and uh, and use that on the leads itself. Now, you want to have the stereo disconnected to do this. We don't want to be feeding any kind of voltage into something that is already hooked up to an existing uh, source of electricity. So uh, make sure the uh, deck is disconnected. And then just very briefly tap the speaker wires onto the two, two terminals. Holding one you know, speaker wire onto one terminal, tap the other speaker wire onto the other terminal of the battery, and you should hear a, a pop. Sends the voltage down the wire through the voice coil, and it moves the cone of the speaker, and obviously that will make a sound. So uh, just don't hold it there, or you can uh, you can end up damaging something. So very quick, brief uh, little taps onto the terminal with the wires, and yeah, you can pop that speaker. And that'll tell you if you have continuity. won't tell you if it's a blown speaker or not, though. Yeah, it just lets you know that the speaker's working. Um, so... Um yeah, the digital voltmeter, you can actually uh, read the voltage uh, coming off those uh, that line to the speaker, uh, and uh, you should see it rise and fall. Uh, that would actually, you, need to be, you would actually need to set it for AC, uh, wouldn't you? If you're going to do that, but that is, the, the kind of information you're going to get off of multimeter uh, for that is not going to tell you anything. Um, that's going to tell you the voltage fluctuation of the amplifier, mm-hmm. uh, whether that be the onboard deck or whether he's running an external amplifier or anything. A voltage test on a speaker during operation really isn't going to do anything for you 
uh, as far as uh, useful information. Uh, if you had an oscilloscope, that might be a different story. Um, but uh, but really, the uh, resistance uh, reading across the speaker is what you're looking for. Well, maybe I misunderstood uh, what he was asking. I thought he was he was like maybe well, he, he had said a dead he speaker. said the term voltmeter. So that's probably where you're thinking of voltage. Uh, is a voltmeter is kind of is what a lot of people call a digital multimeter or a multimeter, right? Because uh, typically they are used to measure voltage. So uh, if you have a dead speaker and you don't think uh, you're curious if that channel is operating or not, if you put a uh, multimeter set it for AC and put it across the, the speaker leads, you should see the voltage rise and fall. That's right. Uh, generally speaking, multimeters aren't fast enough to actually give you uh, the correct readings, like what Josh was talking about on the oscilloscope, which is fast enough to show that. But really all you're wanting to see is that you are getting voltage from the amplifier on that channel. And then you'll know that, you know, that that channel is working. It may not be working right, but it is sending voltage to the speaker. If you're not hearing anything, it's probably a bad speaker. And then you can test the, the speaker in the same uh, manner in which uh, Josh was describing. So let's get over to our next Nikki G question. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, don't really have anything Jeep related right now. But I do have a question for uh, hell, anybody out there. <laughs> uh, as everybody, everybody knows, uh, my dog got worms. I had to take him to the vet. Sir a few weeks ago, and uh, oh. while I was at the vet, the vet recommended that uh, I express his anal glands on a regular oh, basis. No, 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 no. Oh, and boy. Never no. done it before. No, 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 no. no. And believe me, you don't want to Google it's nasty. anal no. glands. No, don't do that. It's no. not very helpful. So if anybody out there knows how to express a dog's anal gland, uh, I'm willing, I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, I tried doing it, but all I all I express out of my dog is anger. No, <laughs> don't do it. All right, guys, uh, the- I know it's the best I can do. <laughs> all right, I'll let- chat you later. You have a good let- one. Bye. Let your vet do that. Uh, oh, that well, is nasty. Tammy's having a, a really bad flashback. Yes. No, I was in the, the vet's office when they did that to my dog once, and it was so disgusting, and the smell was horrible. It's awful. Don't do it. <laughs> and Josh, I know he was Josh joking. could taste it. <laughs> it was just, it was nasty. I've got Don't such do an it. overactive imagination. It's not even funny. I, <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> just churning over here. Well, that's a, yeah. that's a pleasant Nikki G to go out on. Oh, yeah. This has been From the Mind of Nikki G. Ah, reviews. It's much like... <laughs> expressing anal glands so we've got some reviews tonight tammy take it away our first review from itunes woo hoo <laughs> by jetta chick on february 17th of this year gives us a five-star rating and her review is finally able to write a review <laughs> woo hoo it, it rhymes yep <laughs> So thank you very much for uh, going through uh, whatever uh, hoops you had to go through to uh, get on there uh, onto iTunes and uh, and write us a review. Our next one comes from the Twitterverse uh, from Church Turtle at a C44 Antelope. Uh, didn't expect a shout out and especially glad you fought the urge to turn the old turtle <laughs> over. I subscribed <laughs> to the podcast. Looking forward to using that method. And that really is one of the best methods to get at us, guys, is get those subscriptions in. Especially if you are an iTunes user, there are a lot of other ways that you guys can get the show. But if you are an iTunes user, that is the number one best way to get uh, all the uh, all the, uh, the Jeep Talk Show releases that we put out. All the anal gland goodness. Um, so church, you are not going to let that go, are you? <laughs> That's what she said. So the church turtle oh, was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotta go. Bye. So, if you recall, Church Turtle was uh, we uh, we read Church Turtle's uh, a comment last week because that was the re- reference to the to the shout out. So, anyway, let's uh, as Tammy would say, quickly let's talk about uh, Wrangler Talk. Now, recently uh, I posted up on Wrangler Talk. Uh, I uh, have some uh, LEDs that I had purchased to to do some under dash lighting on mm. the on the TJ on the Wrangler. And uh, I have not got around to doing it yet as, uh, you know, I have a lot of things. I have a lot of items laying around here to install on one or more Jeeps. And uh, they kind of continue to sit here. But anyway, I was uh, thinking about uh, uh, doing this 
uh, I guess kick panel or courtesy lights that come on that are under the dash so you can see if there's a big yeah. black spider in the the floor before you put your foot on it. Hopefully not barefoot. But anyway, this is what I posted. I know the X, uh, X model was the bottom of the Wrangler line, but does anyone know if it came with under dash lighting? I've looked. I need to look again, but I can't find any light fixtures under there. Not a great big issue, but it would be a time saver. I have some nice flush mount LEDs I want to put in there, and it would be great just to wire into the factory stuff. I think a lot of people just remove the bulbs uh, when they remove the doors. Of course, a little Google research, and I found that there is a few specifically for that purpose. Uh, if I do wind up uh, having to put in all this new stuff, I'll be sure and make uh, a post about it, and also to make sure it works with a fuse. So uh, I did look. Uh, I, uh, I looked two more times, actually, uh, and I looked on uh, online to see if I could find a, a picture of it. And mine doesn't have any, uh, or I should, I should say my wife's uh, TJ doesn't have any light fixtures in there. So there was a reply to this, uh, this post, and uh, the, the gentleman that re replied had a 2005 X model, and his did have uh, the uh, courtesy lighting or the foot lighting. So I don't know. If you would like to respond uh, to this post, maybe you've got some inf interesting information, go over to wranglertalk.com. And just look for Jeep TJ X model have under dash lighting. Just do a little search and you'll find that. Love to hear from you. Love to have you as a new member. So let's get over to Wrangler Talk with uh, Jeep Mama. So I guess I shut up a little too early, Tammy. Yeah, I was waiting for the... Waiting for the intro, yeah. Uh -huh. Intro. Shut up and listen. Shut up. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. So I think it was last week or maybe the week before I was talking about my soft top and how it's come apart, come out of um, the the door, and it was too cold for me to fix. Well, it's warmed up just a little bit, so I went out and um, tried to fix it. Um, the little door retainer has come out and I was went online to see if other people were having the same problem as I had thinking maybe it was a defect in my soft top and I'm not the only one with this problem. So the door rail retainer, it's, it can be tricky to fully seat into the door frame and it's not a defect. It's just a defect in the operator, I guess. So anyway, you just can't hold it into place with the door. And I have put some steps on my blog on how to better help secure your soft top vinyl window onto your Jeep. Um, first, you take the top rear corner of the soft top window and place it on the Velcro that runs up and down from the top to the bottom. This will hold it into place while you attach the zipper. And you only zip the zipper two inches. And then you would tuck the door rail retainer. It's a plastic, a hard plastic um, and of the door of the vinyl window. So you properly fully seat that and properly position it into the door frame. Then you tuck the bottom of the window. It's the body side retainer into place in the front. Then you can zip it up and secure the window with the Velcro. So my question was, what does fully seated and properly positioned mean? Well, the plastic piece must be folded into the groove of the door frame. And to do this, you need to pull the window with the plastic frame fully seated into the groove, and then you push it with the palm of your hand into place, and you start at the top and you move down to the bottom. Now, you will know it's fully seated if it remains in place without having the door closed on it. Um, some people just set it there and close the door and hopefully they are hoping that that will stay and it doesn't usually when you start driving faster of speeds of 50 miles per hour or more it will pop out and that's apparently what happened to me and i think one of my problems was also that i couldn't get it fully in is because the soft top was cold and you know i mentioned a couple of weeks ago how it was really hard to put the soft top back up because it was too cold it constricted a little because of the cold weather so anyway, now it's I fixed it. It's fully seated, um, and it's good to go. And I also have 
Remember, I have the Jeep Tips page on my blog, which gives all of these great tips. So check it out. And if you have any great tips, tricks, um, ideas on how to make things work easier with your Jeep, just send them on to me at um, www.jeepmama.com. Tony and Josh? You know, Tammy, we're having like uh, spring-like weather here uh, in uh, in the Houston, Texas area. And uh, I was actually thinking about going out and uh, washing the uh, the TJ the other day. And I thought, you know, that, that uh, best top that we have on there uh, has not been washed since we, uh, since we bought it. And right. I was trying to remember. Now, of course, I could just go to jeeptalkshow.com and do a search. But I thought, you know, since I'm here and you're here, I could just ask you, how do you, what, what did you recommend washing those tops with? Is it soap and water or just water? Or it has to no, be something, it, right? Yeah, do not use any commercial soaps. Don't, don't use Dawn or any of those kind of soaps. You really should use um, specially made soaps for the soft top because those oh, chemicals okay. will eat away at it. Okay. So and I, just I used, to... um, it's a best top, um, makes different, you know, soaps and, um, what do you pol- not polish, um, protectant okay. for the soft tops. So I can just go over there to, uh, yeah. to best top and have a look and I can probably go right. to amazon.com yep. and, uh, and, and purchase it, which, uh, you can purchase stuff with uh, through Amazon uh, and uh, get us uh, a few pennies of uh, on each one of your purchase by simply going to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. But we'll be telling you more about that coming up. All righty. Well, we didn't have one of these last week. We've got a tech talk this week, though. So uh, we'll uh, play this promo and let Josh take it away. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever have answers oh that's good because I, I it's tech talk with jeep talk Yahoo! if any of you out there have owned a 1997 to 2001 cherokee then you're likely all too familiar with the window lockout issues oh it's all super fun and dandy for the captain of the ship he's got all the controls at arm's reach what about the poor sap in the back seat his bean burrito just caught up to him and whether or not he's going to be able to roll down that window determines the well-being of every last individual riding in that jeep <laughs> Obviously, what I'm talking about here is the inability of any of the other three passengers in the vehicle to be able to roll down their own windows from their own switch because of the master lockout switch. Not a big deal if you never have passengers, but when you do and the need arises, you'll want things working properly. And, well, here's how you do it. Oh, and don't worry. You're not going to need any specialty tools or a degree in advanced electronics to make this happen. It's actually very simple. The fix only requires the addition of a jumper wire between two circuits. Okay, I may have lost a couple of you right there. In order for this fix to work, we need to bypass the master lockout switch on the driver's door. That's that little button that doesn't really do anything. Now, don't worry. If you decide you'd rather fork out the $140 for a new master switch over finding a piece of wire, then go for it. But in the case of that's an option way down the road, then don't worry. This bypass is also reversible. First thing you're going to need to do is remove the driver's sidekick panel by the hood release. Use a 7 16 inch nut driver or a socket with a long extension to remove the nut holding the kick panel in place. You'll see the indent towards the front of the vehicle where this is located. Remember, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Next, you'll need to remove the two forward-most screws on the trim piece on your door sill. Once you have those out of the way, gently remove the kick panel by sliding it out from behind that trim piece and away from the side of the Jeep. After removing the kick plate, find the lowest connector with the wires that are brown, yellow, and black. Those are going to be the only three wires that are in that connector. Disconnect the two parts of the connector from each other. I believe it is white, typically. Pulling them apart until they separate completely. There will likely be a little lock tab that you'll have to depress in order to do this. At this point, you should have a white disconnected plug in your hand that has a yellow, brown, and black wire in it. At this point, there is n- the only thing that there is left to do is jumper the brown and the yellow wires together. No, you can't simply just cut them and splice them together. A jumper wire is the best solution here as you can install it by soldering the two ends using a grip connectors, or even wire taps. And bottom line is there's a number of ways to do this. And there needs to be a wire that jumps from some point on the brown wire to some point on the yellow wire. No science behind this. It just needs to make the connection. If at this point you are thoroughly confused, you may want to do some quick Google image searches to help clear things up. A little visual representation goes a long way. Once you have made the connections and they are insulated from any potential shorting or damage, plug the two connectors back together and test your windows. You should see that not only do they still work for the master switch, but that Freddy in the back seat can now relieve some pressure with peace of mind, knowing that the window will roll down when it's needed most. 
Hey, Josh. Yeah. Um, when you said righty tighty, I know this has nothing to do with the wires. When you are underneath your Jeep, yes. how do you know which way should be righty tighty? Because if you're looking at it from the up, so is there another way? I always mess it up. I always tighten when I'm supposed to loosen. So uh, does that make it, sense? It, it does depends it if you're on, or on the side that you're trying to pull out. So if you're on the side of the nut, then it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you're on the side of the bolt, then it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's only if you are trying to remove something that is on the other side of something else and it's, well, you'd have to turn yourself 180 degrees to face it that that's, that is backwards. You have to look at it from uh, from the nut side. You know, if you're if you're taking the nut off the the stud, you look at it. I mean, I always kind of like put my hand in the position, you know, where the where the nut is. So if I'm looking at it from behind, it's going to be the opposite. I mean, it's still uh, righty tighty lefty loosey, but it's it's where you're where you're looking at it from. You, does that make sense to you? Kind of. Yeah, I just was I was messing up when I was when I was putting stuff on underneath my Jeep. I'm sorry, I'm totally off topic here. No, it's no, not at all. I finished up with uh, with that, and 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 that is a trick because it, it, you are if you're upside down or you're 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 reaching around and you're trying to you know undo something uh, blind or on the other side of uh, like a frame rail or something like that. Um, then you, yeah, you, you kind of have to do a little bit of, you know, finagling. Okay. If I was looking at it from, you know, the, the angle of what I'm trying to pull it off on, you know, which way is left, which way is right. Look, I've been turning a wrench for the better part of 25, 30 years. I, uh, I still do this little thingy in the air. Yeah. Are you tidy? Okay, which way am I facing that way? Okay. Then it goes this way. All right. And then, yeah, it's, and I'll even grab my socket wrench and, and I'll clicky, clicky, clicky. Okay. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. And and just make sure that yeah okay I'm not going to be snapping a bolt off when I wrench on this thing. Right. I usually try. Uh, I'll try it and then I'll I'll give it enough umph that I think is enough uh, to to get it uh, broken loose. And then if it doesn't budge, I go, you know, especially if it's not a, a huge uh, bolt or nut. All and, right, bring in the breaker bar. We're gonna <laughs> do some big stuff over here. Oh, you know this is pretty funny. I know this this sounds bad, but the the guy that uh, did my 456 gears in my yeah. uh, 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 in my uh, Cherokee, he broke off several nuts, several bolts, while taking the ring gear off the the three fifty five oh. ring gear off because it's reverse thread. You're you're aware of reverse threads, Tammy? Are you? No. I, I was going to avoid confusing her with Can, the whole concept of reverse threads. <laughs> you, you don't run, you don't run across them very often. They have specific purposes. The reason why they're the the threads are reverse, but that means. Uh, lefty, tidy, righty, or Lucy. Oh, now, now next time I'm going to, you totally mess me up. So yeah. Anyway, Josh was, uh, it should be clockwise counterclockwise. Yeah. I'm well, horrible at my left and right. I think people just like saying tidy, uh, myself. Yeah. The good, the, <laughs> the good thing about off-roading though, is instead of going left, right, people say passenger driver. So that saves me right. so much. Yeah. Yeah. I always told my flight instructor to point in a, in a critical emergency. Right. Just point the direction point. you want me to go because yep. I have a hard time with left and right. <laughs> Don't tell me right because I'll go left. <laughs> Starboard and, and yeah, what's the other one? I can't remember. There's a there's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a million people right now listening to this going just yelling at their at their stereo or their eye or their I iPhone. Know. Shut oh, up. Nice. With a, at least we're not talking about Carl with an accent like uh, <laughs> I saw a horrible meme meme about uh, about that. Where uh, his uh, would uh, uh, I can't remember the character's name. Uh, his dad was saying, "Carl, I got you that iPad you were wanting." <laughs> if you haven't seen the most most recent episode of The Walking Dead, you'll you'll see that and you'll laugh. You'll laugh really hard. <laughs> All right, uh, absolutely I'm nothing. I'm groaning really hard over here. <laughs> Moving Absolutely. right along. Uh, oh, I, I did want to ask you, ask a question relevant to the, <laughs> to your, yeah, sorry, your topic here, uh, uh, Josh. Now, yeah. if somebody uh, cared to, they would be able to actually install a switch instead of uh, uh, the jumper. They could actually install a switch and have a right. have have the lockout working again. Certainly I would a lot more entailed of a procedure than that because uh, you're removing the door panel at this point. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, that is that is a, a fix. That is another fix is to replace the switch unit, the, the master switch unit altogether. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
otherwise, um, a little piece of wire and uh, and some time uh, can get you the same results. And we'll just caution everybody. Uh, a lot of times that lockout is there so that little kids can't uh, roll down the windows and bail out of the vehicle. Uh, yeah. Same thing with the uh, the child locks that are on the rear doors. Uh, those are mechanical. I haven't had one of those fail. Uh, but uh, so keep that in mind whenever you're you're jumping the uh, jumping this thing, bypassing it, basically making it. Uh, the windows available to uh, without the uh, uh, pilot and command control of being able to lock that out. If you have small children and you're you're worried about them throwing the, the cars or the little sister out of the out of the window, you might want to wait and then uh, get the proper repair. But this is this is great for off road vehicles and you just want to roll the windows down or uh, not have to have somebody in the back go. I really need to roll this window down right now. <laughs> Trust me. So yep, great information. Thank you, Josh. Alrighty, so uh, let's get over to uh, Amazon You Bought What. And I know you're saying we just did an Amazon You Bought What a couple of weeks ago. That's okay. It's so much fun. We're going to do it again. Not the same stuff. Just another one. Amazon.com and the Jeep Talk Show present You Bought What? what? Wow. Josh, it seems like we've uh, we've told everybody about this several times, but uh, give everybody a Reader's Digest version of what we're doing. Sure, we've got new listeners joining mm-hmm. all the time, and they probably don't understand quite what's going on like our veteran listeners do. So uh, for you guys out there that have heard this several hundred times, well, don't worry. We're <laughs> going to do it again. Hey, guys, uh, we've got a great relationship set up with Amazon.com for you guys to have a source to support the show. Now, obviously, we can't take donations directly. I suppose we could, but hey, um, if you <laughs> yeah. uh, are out, to, yeah, right. If you guys are out doing some online shopping, well, there's a great way to help support the uh, the Jeep Talk Show and get the stuff that you're buying online at all at the same time. All you got to do is head over to JeepTalkShow.com/slash/Amazon. That's simple. Once you go there, it's going to take you straight to Amazon.com, where you guys can do all your online shopping as you ordinarily would. But everything that you purchase from that point on in the next 24 hours. Amazon has agreed to give us a small little kickback from each one of those purchases. Now it's you know it's it is pennies here, guys, and and so and it varies. I mean, we'll 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 sometimes get more money off of a CD than we will off of a uh, off of a blender. So it just goes to show you that it never really doesn't matter what you buy. And this is where the fun begins because we don't get to see who is buying what. All we get to see are the purchase the purchases that are being made. Sometimes we get some really interesting stuff. And uh, But uh, this week, we've got a few selections for you guys, so let's find out what you guys have bought. Well, the first one is a Logitech HD Pro webcam. It's the C920. It's widescreen video calling and recording. It's for $69.99. And it has full or video chat in full HD, 180p. I'm not, is that PSI? I don't know what. 20, Ooh, that'd be a lot of PSI. That is progressive scan versus interlaced. Oh, ah, okay. There you go. Video on Skype, or you stream yourself gaming in fluid HD 720p on twitch.tv. It records vibrant, true to life HD video clips that capture the smallest details. Integrated H264 compression provides more fluid videos in full HD and fast, smooth uploads. Two microphones capture natural stereo audio and filter out the black background noise. Full HD glass lens and premium auto focus deliver razor sharp, clear images and consistent high definition works on windows, Mac, Chrome OS and Android. Cool beans. I got one yeah. of these things, Josh. I think you have one too. I think you? I was going to say that, that sounds familiar and judging by the look of it, I think it's just a slightly newer version of the one that I got. Yep. Yep. Uh, they, they're coming out with new ones all the time. The, the little bastards. Well, I guess it's a good thing, but still, you know, you get something, then they come up with something better. Yeah. What are you going to do? Just keep spending that money. Anyway, uh, this one is a Optima battery. I think this is like the holy grail of batteries for Jeeps because uh, uh, they are they do not contain uh, their gel cells, so they don't contain a lot of battery acid that slops around whenever the your Jeep is off road or upside down. Uh, you can even mount these things sideways. Anyway, this red top uh, starting battery is one hundred and fifty five ninety nine. At Amazon.com, it is a Prime. So if you're a Prime member, you can get this uh, with two-day shipping and uh, free shipping. Uh, it's not really free; you pay for it being a Prime member, but still, you don't pay anything extra uh, for the 
So this is a 12 volt, 800 cold cranking amps. It's a uh, 10 inch by seven, six and seven eighths by seven and 13 sixteenths tall. It weighs 38.8 pounds, dual SAE wow. and GM ports. That means the uh, top posts and side uh, reserve cap capacity of a hundred minutes for consistent performance, optimal starting power, even in bad weather. That m they must mean cold weather because I can't really think that a, a bad storm would be a problem for a battery <laughs> <laughs> unless it was a flood. Uh, 15 times more resistance to vibration for durability. This item not for sale in uh, Catalina Island. Oh, that's Why? too bad for Why those people. Why always the Catalinas? They always get <laughs> less out. Special shipping information. This uh, item cannot be returned and has additional shipping restrictions. That's a big one. So thank you very much for going over there. I mean, hundred somebody spent 155 bucks and uh, remember well, that's us. That's a red top, man. That is that is the. Uh, I mean, I've got I'm running yellow tops. Now that's the what I, I'd I, want. That's what that's what I wanted, but they didn't have the proper yellow top at Sam's Club when I went to get uh, this. I could have gone to Amazon, uh, and of course I could have gone to Jeep Talk Show. Uh, dot com slash Amazon and made this purchase and had it uh, shipped straight to my door and the UPS guy would say, "What the hell's in this box?" <laughs> 38 pounds as he walks away with a limp that's right yeah, imagine getting a pair of these things delivered ups guy's really gonna hate you after that well i've got something that's probably not <laughs> nearly as heavy uh, this one is the quick clean cat litter box for 8428 this is one heck no of a way. litter box to to use simply <laughs> fill the bottom with clumping cat litter to clean just simply spin one turn and your kitty litter is clean cat waste is separated into an easy empty drawer no more scoops costly replacement containers or handling of cat litter. No batteries, plugs, or cords uses any self-clumping cat litter made in the USA of durable and recycled polypropylene. 100% recycled material reduces cat litter on floor caused by digging or bolting. The quick clean cat litter box available for you for only $84.28 on Amazon.com. Can be used as a salad spinner when properly cleaned. Oh, <laughs> want to sanitize that. <laughs> That's a joke, people. Don't do that. Don't, don't try that at home. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys playing along with us here by going over to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon and making a purchase so we can see what you bought and we can talk about it here on our little uh, podcast. We just found out what you bought. Oh, my God. I just can't believe that made it on the list. <laughs> It's time for the camp fireside chat. Here I am talking all by myself in my Jeep. Now I'm getting out and walking up to a campfire. That's you walking. What is that? Friday yeah, the 13th? That was, that was you walking. No, that was you walking. In the, in the grass. Mind. Yeah, that, I'm that's horrible right. at sound effects. <laughs> Yet you still try. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Tony, last week you were telling us about uh, some slow starting or hard starting or no starting on one of your Jeeps. Has that been taken care of? Gosh, was it last week? It seems longer than that. Uh, the uh, We had a, uh, um, 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 what do you call that thing on the, the sensor that's on the back of the throttle body? I want to say TSA, but that's not right. Uh, the throttle or the throttle position sensor, yeah. TPS? Yeah. Had a, 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 a the throttle position sensor on the ninety nine. It was having problems running. It wouldn't idle. Um, oh. So I uh, actually had to replace that. How and, did you uh, really quick? How did you determine it was that of uh, of all the other things that it could have been? About two years ago, I had the same issue <laughs> on the same Jeep, and I had oh a, wow, I had the, had a spare uh, 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 sensor, and it yeah. wasn't a uh, a Jeep Chrysler uh, actual sensor. It was one that I had. Uh, got uh, off of uh, e uh, either eBay. Not not. Uh, I don't buy used sensors. So this was a, like a new, uh, a new uh, uh, throttle pos position sensor. Uh, but it was like uh, either Amazon, uh, non. You know, a third party, third uh, an aftermarket, and it just didn't work right uh, on mine. So I uh, I bought a uh, bought one from the Jeep dealership, put it on mine, and threw that one in the in the box so that it would be uh, available for. Um, you know, a, a field repair or something that to get me sure. down the road long enough to, to get it get it working. So, was the one that failed an actual Mopar no. sensor? Or no, no, that was that that one that I was just describing. Oh, okay. So okay. I threw that on there, and it took care of the problem for a year and a half or so. And it was really cold out, and I, it may have just been acting up to the uh, the bad weather. And that's kind of what you're going to expect whenever you don't get the Mopar, uh, the Chrysler Jeep uh, sensors, is that they may not function properly 
uh, in the same temperature range, uh, depending on the quality of the parts that are used to make it. So that's right. Tony, what yeah, I've, I've had personal experience on that same exact thing. I, geez, I think I'm on my third or fourth oil pressure sensor. Uh, and finally, you know, bit the bullet and got what I should have uh, from the get go. Yeah, that's a um, um, that's on the 99 Jeep Cherokee that we have. Uh, I've I have all new sensors, all new Mopar, Chrysler, whatever they're called, Jeep sensors on my uh, rebuilt engine. So now, do you think good. if you know if I keep my Jeep as long as you guys have kept your Jeeps, do you think I'm going to be running into like problems oh, like you guys are having? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, it, but it'll yeah. be Sen sensors don't last forever. I mean, they they are you know sensitive measuring equipment. Uh, when you really break it down, yes, they are ruggedized to uh, you know survive the 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 rigors of you know the elements and, and engine compartments and, and all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, they they do they do wear out over time and and they can fail uh, suddenly as well. So um, yeah, I mean it's it's bound to happen sooner or later. Yeah, I think the um, the crank position sensor uh, that reads the flywheel position, uh, so that the uh, computer knows uh, where the pistons and everything are, so it actually uh, reads that sensor for the timing of the whole vehicle. Anyway, that mm. the crank position sensor is a very common one to go out. Uh, it's actually a very common one that uh, allows people to buy uh, Jeep Cherokees for five hundred dollars because it hasn't run in a year. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you just show up over there with a crank position sensor, two bolts, and put the new one in and drive, crank it up and drive it home. <laughs> oh, if it were only that easy. <laughs> Those things are a pain in the butt to get to. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if you've done it before. Um, yeah. If you've done a couple other, not so bad. Yeah. And uh, you have the, the, you know, the, the 15, uh, um, Three eighths inch extensions, extensions yeah. And, and yeah, <laughs> the, the twirly bit at the end. What do you call those things? I always call uh, them a U joint, but yeah, just the U joint or, or, a, or a wobble bit. A wobble bit. That's what it is. A wobbly bit. Um, so I'm looking at images online right now. There's no way I would ever be able to do this by myself. <laughs> no, uh, the, it's really it makes it a lot easier if you drop the front drive line. Uh, so any any of you uh, TJ or uh, or XJ owners or uh, MJ owners out there, uh, yeah, you got to do one of these sensors. Uh, back of the bell housing, drop the front drive line, uh, and prepare yourself with about two and a half feet of extensions and at least one U joint or a wobbly bit really help matters as well. Yeah. Jeez. So really, nothing else to report uh, um, with the uh, yeah. with the Jeep. I haven't really done anything other than uh, it it sat without being started for a week. Uh, oh, that's right. That's what we talked about last week, and uh, I had to uh, put the uh, I. I uh, those I had a couple of things still pulling power on them, so uh, or I had one thing still pulling power on it, so it ran the battery down again, and I had to uh, jump start it. But this time I let it run for a while. Since I have the uh, that alarm system with remote start, I can yeah. actually start it and let it run um, without having to have the keys in it. So I don't have to worry about somebody coming up and uh, taking off in the Jeep. So um, did you figure out what the drain was? The uh, LCD display on that. Uh, uh, external uh, temperature sensor. Oh, okay. Because I had yeah, that yeah. one plugged in, and I had the the camera, the dash cam plugged in, which I had unplugged that last time, but I had forgotten about the LCD display. Mm, yeah, probably just enough amp amps to uh, do a slow drain. Yeah, it has to be. I don't. You know, 40, 40 milliamps is what comes to mind. I think is the maximum drain you're supposed to have uh, on a battery. Um, so uh, I, I think that's correct. Don't quote me on it. I don't have that number. I honestly, I think it's going to depend really on the on the group size and cold cranking amp rating of the uh, of the battery for for what that that number would be for each oh, vehicle. Yeah, for the precise the precise number, I think the the forty milliamps is just a kind of a uh, oh, just ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of a general. What do you look at for uh, if you're a mechanic type person without having to look stuff up? So this is the time of year uh, a lot of us are, are doing taxes, at least probably should be, uh, and uh, getting tax returns or, or paying them, depending on which side of the fence you're on. Um, and, and I generally get a tax return, and I generally have a nice little chunk of change to do something, um, I'm going to say impressive, uh, with my Jeep build and stuff like that. Usually it's, you know, something, a, a very large purchase, uh, you know, that, that wow factor like, like Tony was talking about earlier. Uh, you know, wheels and tires or um, next stage of lift or long arms, you know, something like that. Typically, those larger purchases uh, don't don't come with just, you know, every paycheck on Friday. Uh, you got to save up for them. Or like I do, I typically use tax return money uh, to do big purchases and stuff like that. Well, 
Uh, this time around, um, I've got the option this year. I've got the availability the, of heading to Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. I've never been anywhere tropical ever, period. Uh, and uh, I've got the opportunity to fly uh, down there and, and stay. Now, my accommodations are going to be taken care of. Uh, but getting down there and, you know, eating and entertainment and all that other stuff, I, I'm going to have to come out of pocket for. It's going to be several hundred dollars nonetheless. Uh, I mean, airline tickets are probably going to be in the range of three or four hundred dollars, I'm guessing. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to be going alone. I'm going to be taking my girlfriend with me. So um, what would you do? Would you go to Hawaii for the first time ever? Or would you buy some Jeep parts? I'm stuck. Tell are me, the Jeep me, parts you... for you or for me? <laughs> well, they're not going to be for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh, the, you need to you go know, to there's, Hawaii. There's a lot of things that that are on the uh, the want list for the Jeep, and and some things that I definitely need if I am going to take it to this next level. Now, it, it's really more of completion parts than it is to be starting something over, or starting something from scratch. Um, so this is going to be something that that is going to complete some other part piles that I have out in the garage. Uh, to you know, to do some other stuff to the Jeep. Now, obviously, both are very, very attractive. Taking my Jeep to the next level of its build, or going someplace tropical, someplace I've never ever been before. Uh, both are are very appealing, and I'm and I'm kind of stuck right now. And I'm sure there's a lot Hawaii. of people that are screaming at me, "Go here, do <laughs> that!" Hawaii. And so, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna tell you from. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a few questions and maybe help you make, means. make you help you make a decision. Yeah. Um, you like to take your Jeep off road. I sure do. You like to go on wheeling trips. Uh, generally speaking, Absolutely. you go by yourself. You meet up with some friends or, or buddies at uh, wherever you're going, and, and you and I know you go off road for weekends uh, sometimes. So, uh, and and you also like to buying Jeep parts, obviously, because oh, you like I sure do because you like doing the off road thing, and it's it is just fun to have uh, new stuff on the Jeep and talk about it and show it off to friends. Now. It really depends on the individual, but I can't imagine any uh, significant other being happy with the spending of money for Jeep parts <laughs> or being gone on weekends off wheeling with a bunch of other guys and, and maybe some women out there too, uh, you know. She, she generally goes with me. She she actually likes uh, very much uh, heading up to the hills with me and being out in the Jeep. Now, that yes, there are times where, um, you know, camping for three or four days, no, being nowhere near a bathroom or shower mm -hmm. um, isn't quite as appealing to a girl uh, for obvious reasons, um, especially a girly girl. So um, yeah, there there have been times where, where I, but typically no, she's she's with me and and uh, I've got I've got my girlfriend as my co-pilot, so um, it you know works out really well. I, I'm just thinking that a trip to Hawaii should be pretty good for probably the next ten or fifteen years of. <laughs> You're buying worth more of, Jeep worth parts. Of brownie points, yeah. You're buying more <laughs> Jeep. Hey, you remember that time we went to Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> and I could have bought Jeep parts. But I decided you were more important that we would go and do it and have this fun, and that go to Hawaii. You're and going rent off a Wrangler. You're going off road again. You just went off road two weekends ago. I know, right? Hey, you remember that time that we went to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of me going off road. Ah, <laughs> uh, Tony, you're making a very convincing argument, my friend. So I, uh, I think you would enjoy the Hawaii, and uh, I think I would too. It's I, you know, there, there is one thing that I don't do so well with, and that's heat. I mean, I am a hot-blooded individual, as it will. I yeah. pump out heat like it's crazy. So when it gets even above eighty-four, eighty-five here, I'm, I'm dying. So I know that that Hawaii is is relatively mild and it's like eighty degrees all the time and there's a nice little you know ocean breeze and all that stuff. Um, I'm just worried that it's going to be so hot that I'm going to be miserable and not, how long how long are you going to be there? A week? It'll probably be. I'll probably do a week. Yeah. So suffer through it and you can add to that. You remember time we went to Hawaii and I was yeah. miserable <laughs> for that entire for you. week. I did it for just you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh so yeah, no, just trying it's, to help. Uh, it, it's going to be fun. I, 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 uh, I, if there's a way that I can pull off both, believe me, I will find it. <laughs> so. Well, you're doing this voiceover work, so you're gonna you're gonna see some coin from that, uh, and I'm sure it's going to increase over time. So, uh, I think that uh, you know you uh, you have a, a couple of avenues there, and uh, I'd highly recommend doing the Hawaii thing. I, I don't think the plane tickets are going to cost 300 bucks, though. I think they're going to be more. 
Yeah, you're probably right, uh, especially if, if it's going to be within three months um, uh, of, uh, of travel time uh, when I make the purchase. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a continuing theme here, guys. Um, so this last Sunday was a, uh, was a special day, uh, being February the 14th. Uh, now, just take a wild guess. Sunday was, however, you know, by the way, um, the only day that I had available to work on my Jeep. So what do you think that I did? You got your uh, significant uh, significant other out there and helped you work on the Jeep. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's happened once, literally <laughs> once in in like a decade. Uh, so no, that's that that didn't happen. I I did uh, I did have to uh, didn't have to. I chose to to do the Valentine's Day thing. We had a a very splendid Valentine's Day, and I I couldn't be more happy about that. But I am a little bit amiss that it's been now a couple weeks uh, since I've done any work on my Jeep, and and I. I'm really chomping at the bit to to get this wrapped up. I'm it's starting to get that stale taste out there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like okay, things haven't moved in a while. We need to get some production done here. Let's let's get let's get going. Well, I boycott Valentine's Day. Oh, you, 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 you got something I against chocolate and flowers? No, I just don't believe in it. I would I get mad if I get stuff on Valentine's Day. It's, I, you should I, be surprised. I they think should, you should get surprised. I think as you get older, yeah. I think as you get old, yeah. I agree with you. I think as you get older, you start seeing these these days as just a way of retailers trying to come right. up with another reason for you yeah. to spend money to keep their profits up, and it just really uh, grates on my nerves. Yeah. So I I um I let my husband do whatever he wants on Valentine's Day. I guess that's my Valentine's Day present to him, huh? There you go. <laughs> yeah. So you've been doing some binge watching of uh, television again, haven't you, Tammy? Ah, uh, I am so bad. I my poor kids were eating frozen pizzas. Obviously, they were cooked in the the oven, and the laundry has piled up. I am so addicted to Sons of Anarchy. Oh boy! <laughs> I started watching. There's seven seasons. There's 92 episodes. I started watching last Wednesday, and I was watching a season a day. <laughs> Good Lord. I know. I I had so much stuff to do. So, obviously, the only thing I got done on my Jeep was fixing the soft top. I had, you know, I need to fix my CB radio. I don't know if you guys saw, or if I mentioned it on here, when I went and installed it. Um, the new Rugged Ridge CB mount. I installed the CB upside down. It's still upside down. Wow. Um, I, I know. There's all these little nitpicky things in my Jeep that I need to fix. And I've been busy watching Sons of Anarchy. I still have one season <laughs> left. So don't tell me what happened. Hey, I, I saw somebody, uh, I think it was a, a, gosh, it was a little video. I mean, a little commercial clip, a little teaser uh, and it showed this uh, truck driver uh, pulling his microphone down from, you know, like where you have yours mounted up in mm -hmm. the middle. And it had a little, uh, like a, a return cord on it. It wasn't coiled. It was like it was a, a little spool oh, a or something. Oh, retractable Yeah. Type. And he pulled it down and he talked on it and he let it go and it zoomed back up there to the top. And I That's thought cool. about you because that would be a, a real good thing for you. Right. Where you could just pull it down when you need to use it and let it go. Josh, yours is a... You have yours tied up over your uh, over your um, uh, rear view mirror. That might actually be a good I thing for you did, as well. I did for a while. I actually uh, last year, was it last year, the year before, I actually uh, converted it to the retractor thingy, majigger. Ah, the same the same thing okay. that you ah. find at the truck stops. Yep, same same exact thing. Ah. Now what I did is I clipped mine to the 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 screw that holds the clip for the visor on the passenger side on the, in the center. I used that screw to mount my, you know, retractor device, and my my mic just hangs just to the right of my rearview mirror. It's perfect. Yeah, you don't need the thing very much, uh, although you might, because uh, you might get on a tirade uh, about uh, them Smokies. And uh, <laughs> um, and the other thing, I was supposed to meet up with CPO um, Chris from Jeep's Needs um, mm -hmm. for the D Link adapt, right? The D Lift adapter. Um, the purple D lift adapter is in and I was going to pick it up today, but, um, we had a middle school beating for my son's school. He's starting middle school next year. So I didn't get it. So I'm really excited to, um, pick that up. Yeah. Um, it's, that's really nice of uh, Jeep's yeah. needs to have done that. And uh, Jeep mama purple, that's the, 
uh, D-ring link adapter. So it actually cl clips over the, the D-ring on your uh, your Jeep. And they've got a nice little uh, hard plastic pad on there too. So if you don't have a D-ring or if you want to uh, lift from the side, uh, like maybe you've got some sliders or something, you can put that on there and it doesn't even uh, mar the surface. Yeah, I've got the yellow one here that I still need to uh, do the, the video on and right. uh, then get it shipped out to Josh. Of course, Josh doesn't have a, a functional XJ right now, so I guess it's no great hurry. Right. Yeah, no, no, not super hurry, but that will be taken care of here very soon. And um, the my first attempt in the snow video from the blizzard of 2016, it's still rising in um, video watches. It's up to like 23,000. Wow. So I'm like, you know, oh, I'm going to go you. check. Because my most of my videos are monetized through YouTube, and guess how much money I made? Fifty nine seven cents. I was thinking fifty nine, so almost double. Twenty three cents. Woo! Oh, <laughs> I know. Woohoo! One one cent per thousand. Wow. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I'm I'm rich. Maybe I'll send you my twenty three cents, Josh, and you can go to Hawaii and buy Jeep parts. Oh yeah, rolling in that YouTube money. Yep. So All righty. That's it for me. Oh, lots of fun on uh, campfire side chat. Josh, where are we on Wheeling Where? We are right here. And right <laughs> now. <laughs> well, well, this is where we are talking about what events are coming up in your guys' neck of the woods and around the nation. Now, there is one big event that we're probably going to be talking about uh, quite a bit until the actual date happens because this is the big one. It's like, well, the biggest thing ever. It's the 50th anniversary of wow. the biggest Jeep event in the world. If you guys have been waiting for a good excuse to go, this is it. March 19th through the 27th, the Easter Jeep Safari returns for its 50th inception down in Moab, Utah, the only place, guys. The Red Rock four-wheelers have all the info you guys are going to need about this epic event. Head over to www.rr4w.com and look for the link to the 50th Easter Jeep Safari. Guys, start putting this on your calendar now, March 19th through the 27th. It's going to be a big one. Another one that we had talked about last week, uh, one that I am very proud to present to you guys, Military Jeepers is presenting the Wheelers for the Wounded. Wheelers for the Wounded is a nonprofit charity that goes on and helps disabled veterans out while taking them off-roading for the weekend and raising money for wounded warriors. Last year, check this out, they raised $22,000 and hope this year they can do even better. The event will be held February 27th, so as our podcasters are listening to this, it's happening right around the corner. It's at an off-road park called Canyons Off-Road Park in Fredericksburg, Texas. Welcome to come and join. It's an open invite. Show your support for veterans and the off-road community, guys. You can find more information on their Facebook page called Wheelers for the Wounded slash Texas. Happening February 27th in the Canyons Off-Road Park in Fredericksburg, Texas. For more information, head over to the Facebook page called Wheelers for the Wounded slash Texas. And don't forget, Jeep Junkies, wherever you guys are wheeling, if you pack it in, let's pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good a condition than they were when we arrived. And always remember to tread lightly, stay on designated trails, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. That's it for this week, guys. If you have an event coming up in your area, let's get the word out. It doesn't matter if it's a show and shine, a cruise in, even a club run or a fundraiser, or even be a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari. Let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Obviously, Jeepers, you guys are out there buying parts. We hear about it in our Amazon You Bought What segment. Next time you guys are out buying Jeep parts, make sure you ask the business if they know about the Jeep Talk Show. Let them know just how much you guys enjoy the podcast. If you're buying a product or a service from a vendor because of a review or discussion you guys heard here on the show, let them know. And if they don't already know about the show, be sure and tell them about the one and only Jeep Talk Show. Hey, we know you guys are going to Amazon because we see your purchases all the time. I'll just remind you once again, go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. Of course, if you need the whole thing, it's HTTP jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. Amazon, all lowercase. It'll take you straight over to Amazon, uh, but it will, I don't know, press the little magic button so that we get the, the few cents credit for any purchase that you make. Uh, if you want to go to a public library and type that in on every browser for the next 24 hours, any purchases being made will go to us. <laughs> so, hey, seriously, somebody does that. I'm sending you a sticker or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's awesome, right there. <laughs> so, so that's kind of cool that uh, how it that, that it works that way. Uh, so, uh, any uh, if you're over at your uncle's house, your uh, ex-wife's house, or, or or wherever, and you know maybe you're uh, hacking into her PC to see what's going on, you can always just type in that. Uh, Jeep Talk Show slash Amazon and uh, any purchases, uh, what well, you actually might hear about them 
<laughs> especially if they're twisted ones <laughs> on our Amazon oh, you bought boy. what so make sure that you visit and like our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Jeep Talk Show on the Twitter at Jeep Talk Show we're on Stitcher Radio tuned in uh, dot com iTunes YouTube and uh, well the YouTube is uh, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show you see a theme here right uh, like the show, help us out, and tell a friend. Don't uh, forget, you can be part of the show as well. There's always a fourth seat open. We're, uh, we'd love to hear about Renegades or the new Cherokee, whatever that you have information to share with us on. Just info at jeeptalkshow.com. We'll get you set up and get you as a contributor to the show. Everybody have a great Jeep week. See you later. Bye-bye. Oh, don't forget about Tammy over at uh, jeepmama.com. Josh uh, with his voiceover work. Josh, what's that website information? The voice of Josh.com. And uh, if you have any computer stuff you'd like to have uh, taken care of over the internet, uh, that's basically all you have to do is have a computer and uh, internet connecting uh, that's working on that PC. I can help you out. Just go to mux, M U C C S dot com, and uh, you can contact me and I can uh, help you with your PC. Everybody have a great night. Warning, the Jeep Talk Show is intended for entertainment purposes only. Use as directed. In relation to actual information, real Jeeps or persons living or dead are purely coincidental. The Jeep Talk Show is not responsible for lost or stolen items, and some assembly is required. For a full list of restrictions and contest rules, see store for details. Batteries not included. The Jeep Talk Show is for external use only. Contents under pressure. Side effects may include vertigo, uncontrollable laughter, or greasy discharge and false kung fu powers. The Jeep Talk Show and its contents are known to cause cancer in the state of California. It is probably not a federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. The Jeep Talk Show may be a choking hazard. Keep out of reach of small children. All safety precautions must be observed when using the Jeep Talk Show. If you feel you've reached this recording in error, please hang up and try your call again.